I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Joe. House Digital. Maserati, Rick, and Detroit. Deep. Convertible bird in Miami. Yo. Graduated summa cum laude. Yo. Strip club made a tsunami. Black. Carlton Hines with the ball game. Wish. Grateful Edmonds with the snowflakes. No. Craig Pettis in the M Town. Sal Magluta with the boat game. <laughs> Falcone with the cocaine. Uh. Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game. Uh. Like Monster Cody in South Central. Wow. Larry Davis from Close wow. Range. In the Bible it says, what goes around comes around. I'm gonna shot me three weeks later, he got shot. In the Bible it says, what goes around comes around. I'm gonna shot me three weeks later, he got shot. I'm gonna shot me three weeks later, he got shot. Because the senseless murder of a young lady, Nicolia Taylor. It's a sad day in not only New York City, but in America, when a young lady is sitting down, walking or, or walking or hanging out with her boyfriend, and someone comes up, tries to shoot him, and they shoot her. It's a sad day. I want to put out there that the Law Enforcement Alliance is in 100, 100% backing Mayor Bloomberg with his staunch gun control laws that he wants passed nationally. We don't want to come become the next Chicago. It's almost happening now. We just thought about four weeks ago, over in Brownsville, young young child, one years old, shot walking. Who's standing by with Jim Gray? Jim? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Steve. Mike, was that your shortest fight ever? I bear witness there's only one God, and Muhammad blesses and peace be upon him as his prophet. I dedicate this fight to my brother, Darrell Baum, who died. I'll be there to see you. I love you with all my heart. All praise be to my children. I love you. Oh, oh God, I'm man. What? Is this your shortest fight ever? In any time? Amateur, professional ever? Assalamu alaikum, Ida. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, Lennox Lewis, Lennox. I'm coming for you. Like, is it frustrating to train like you did and then have no, this in seven or eight seconds? For this fight. I only trained probably two weeks or three weeks for this fight. I had to bury my best friend and I dedicated this fight. I wasn't going to fight. I dedicated this fight to him. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lex is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claws, there's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous, my defense is impregnable, and I'm just ferocious. I want your heart, I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. Are you saying now, Mike? The Mike? Yeah, yeah, we back. Shit got popular. Mob, we on our way to NYC with it. Headshot City, Brooklyn to be exact. The Bedford Stuyvesant section. Y'all meet us in Lafayette Gardens. All my guys from LG, y'all get in the comment box. Y'all know how we run it. Now, today, we are going to be telling the story of one of the most nefarious, mysterious, and notorious gangsters to come out of Brooklyn in the 1990s. And the person that I'm talking about today is going to be a guy by the name of Daryl Homicide Homo Bomb. Now, if you're not from the city or if you're not really plugged in, you probably know the name Hamo or Daryl Homicide Bomb from being immortalized on 50 Cent's all-time classic song, Many Men, with 50 raps. And the Bible, it says what goes around comes around. Hamo shot me three weeks later. He got shot down. And if you don't know him from that reference, you probably know him from being Mike Tyson's bodyguard, if that make any sense. Now, when I go to telling some of these stories, especially the ones from New York City and Brooklyn that was circa the 90s or the 80s, a lot of them hit close to home because you would hear the names reverberating on the streets, especially if you was in the streets at that time or if you had any family members in the streets at that time. And this just happens to be one of those stories because I could vividly remember when I was right around 16, between 16 and 18, I'm going to say. And it was right around this age where my cousin, 
who was living in the Bushwick section of Brooklyn. And it was right around this time where him and his family would go to move to the Best Star section. And this would be my first introduction to Best Star because really every part of Brooklyn is different um, and has its own kind of feel. You would really have to be there or live there to know. But if anybody know Best Star, it's kind of a little bit different. Well, it was a little bit different from the parts of Brooklyn that I've been to because it's almost more like brownstones. But in the middle of those brownstones, you'll have like these projects like Tompkins or you'll have LG. And I even I even want to say Brevoit kind of to a certain extent. But my cousin was living on Stuyvesant. I can't remember if he was living on Stuyvesant at this time or Green. But I remember going to visit him one weekend. And the first thing that he told me when I got there was we got to get a bike. And... I, I was thrown off and I was confused at the time. I'm like, we got to get a bike. Then he had went on to explain that he had borrowed a bike from a dude named Hamo and he had to get a bike back. That threw me off a little bit more because we really wasn't getting no bikes back. So just my how my cousin was on that we needed to get this bike, not knowing at the time who Hamo was, that let me know the level of the situation, if y'all understand me. And somehow my cousin kind of got to explaining the dude. Only thing I really remember about him saying was he was kind of a shorter dude and he walked with a limp. And my cousin was actually introduced to him by some dudes we knew from Lafayette named Doc and Trev. Shout out to them if anybody know Doc and Trev. But long story short, we end up going on a little spree and it would be right around that time where I realized how small Brooklyn actually was because, like I said, my cousin moved from Bushwick to Bed-Stuy, but we would be back and forth from Bushwick to Bed-Stuy. We would walk on Broadway, and I want to say it was the J or the Z train that kind of ran from Bushwick. And if I'm not mistaken, I know it runs through Queens in some way. But we would end up getting a bike, and he would never come back to get the bike. But fast forward a few years later, when I would start to do research on mob ties, and one name that would always come up when I was covering these New York gangsters from the 80s was Iron Mike Tyson. So really, even after hearing the 50 Cent lyrics, I still didn't associate the incidents or the people that my cousin was talking about that, and 50 Cent was talking about. It was only until I started doing my research for certain episodes of Mob Ties and I noticed this name, Hamo, from Lafayette Gardens would continue to pop up. He would eventually be shot and killed in Brooklyn on June 10th in the year of 2000 on the corner of Quincy Street and Marcy Avenue. But that would not be the last that you would hear of his name because when Murder, Inc. would be indicted on their money laundering charges, his name would come up in association with that case. Now, in the government's attempts to link Murder, Inc. and Supreme McGriff, they would argue in closed chambers that the shooting to 50 Cent was directly linked to Murder, Inc. because it was ordered by Supreme, which was the subject of Murder, Inc.'s money laundering indictment. Now, even one of Supreme McGriff's former associates, Joe Ragnan, who actually was his business partner in the business Picture Perfect, which produced the DVD Crime Partners, which was a big part of that money laundering trial. Now, trying to get leniency for a major credit card fraud that he had been caught up in, he had agreed to testify for the government against Supreme McGriff and essentially Murder, Inc. And he would testify that alleged Supreme Team gunman, Robert Sun Lyons and Chauncey Guard B. Milner met in Brooklyn immediately after the May 2000 shooting of 50 Cent. Now, almost luckily for Murder, Inc., a lot of this evidence would not be heard at trial as their lawyers will argue and even present the song Many Men as evidence 
that none of those two were the shooters and 50 Cent admitted himself that Hama was actually the shooter. Now with him already being gone for five years, you would almost think that that was the last that you would hear of anything, but not so fast because in April of 2005, the Daily News would go on to report that accused gang leader, Damon World Hardy wanted to kill Mike Tyson. And this was only because Mike Tyson had placed a $50,000 bounty on his head for his alleged involvement in the death of Mike Tyson's bodyguard slash best friend, Daryl Hamo Bomb. So I look at it like this. Just think about it. For Daryl Hamo Bomb to only have been involved allegedly with the 50 Cent shooting, where he didn't even kill 50 Cent. Just look how synonymous his name is in the streets and he will go down as one of the most mysterious crime figures to come out of the city of New York and definitely Brooklyn. But y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter. It's your boy Popalot, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all hit the red subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill is dropping. And you know I'm going to be back with some more of these street tales ASAP. It's your boy Popalot. Mob gang.